Hello there everyone and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Today we'll be talking about making CTF challenges, not playing them since there is a lack of resources on the internet about how you can make an interesting CTF challenge. You know there is plenty of resources about playing CTF challenges, there is plenty of walkthroughs and write-ups about uh, playing CTF challenges and solving them but not so many about making CTF challenges. That's why I decided to make this video. So uh, young uh, and junior, let's say, author, uh, CTF authors and technical team members have an idea about how it actually happens making CTFs and uh, writing CTFs, CTF challenges. So let's get started. The first thing or the most important thing when it comes to making a CTF challenge is actually choosing an idea or a trick. See that's, that's gonna be the topic of the challenge or the main point of the challenge. You know CTF challenges uh, have so many goals or so many uh, let's say points one of them is learning something so when you are making the CTF challenge make sure that you choose an interesting idea or an interesting trick that the users uh, should learn about should uh, search about it in Google and uh, learn about that topic in order to learn something and meanwhile they should also have fun and uh, you know enjoy the moment so Let's let's talk about choosing an idea or how you can choose an interesting idea or a nice trick that the users will learn during or uh, while playing your CTF challenge. So, a few things that uh, could help you doing that. For example, we could be saying more people should know about something. Where something is the idea or the trick that you should uh, include or should develop inside your CTF challenge. You could be also saying, I don't think people know something. For example, there is a new vulnerability in this browser or in this operating system or whatever. You could be making your CTF challenge revolve around that new vulnerability or that uh, new bug in order to make sure that players get an idea of what real world bugs or real world vulnerabilities look like. You could be also saying, I think so and so is cool. So it doesn't have to be something uh, very technical in fact or very difficult, but it just should be or could be a nice concept, a nice cool uh, concept or uh, a nice idea that players should know about in the realm of the computer science and technology world. Finally, you could be saying something is very interesting when it comes to uh, low level, uh, low level, for example, topics or low level, uh, I don't know, uh, ideas or tricks. So there's like plenty of room, plenty of choices when it comes to choosing a nice CTF uh, challenge idea or nice CTF challenge trick. Make sure to make a list of ideas when you're playing CTFs or watching YouTube videos or reading articles. And whenever you learn about something new in the digital world or something new in the cybersecurity world, make sure to take that as a note. In fact, I myself, I have a list of ideas where each time I watch a new YouTube video or watch a new documentary or learn about some uh, new, I don't know, new, for example, vulnerability or new bug or some developments in the cybersecurity world, I take th those as notes and when it's time for making CTF challenges for a certain CTF or for a certain competition, I go back to my ideas list and I search for an interesting topic and then I start the next step. The next step is actually the implementation. So, the implementation is pretty straightforward, it's not that difficult or it doesn't uh, take a lot of time and effort, you just have to write code, test it and repeat the process until you're sure or you're confident that the code you just wrote and the challenge is uh, playable and has no uh, bugs or problems or anything. You could be using for example ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot in order to write the initial code since you'll be uh, uh, wasting a lot of time making the initial code. So these AI tools could help you write the initial code for your CTF challenge and then you could be testing the code, adding uh, vulnerabilities, adding uh, the little tricks you might uh, want to add. And finally, repeat the process, test yourself, repeat the process, and make sure that your code has no bugs, has no problems. Uh, try to avoid unintended solves, for example, etc. Now, moving on to the third and most important step, which is solving your own CTF challenge. That sounds weird, but in fact, Solving your own CTF challenge, either it be you or some friend in the technical team or some other author or even CTF players, you should be hearing about uh, your challenge from other people, hearing feedback and 
uh, learning about new things since sometimes you know solving the challenge can reveal some unintended solves that you didn't think of or some problems or some bugs so make sure to make your own solver for example uh, and make sure it actually works so that when players are trying to solve your uh, challenge and writing solvers you could have a look at their solver and at your own solver and do the comparison see the difference and try to help them uh, or try to give them hints also a nice or best practice is making write ups for your ctf challenge since you won't be up the whole ctf sometimes players might open tickets in the discord server of the ctf challenge or whatever and the other technical team members or the other authors could have uh, a look at your write up that you already wrote and could help the other players when you're not around, when you're not available. Also, when it, comes, when it comes to hints or guides, make sure to give the players just enough hints so they're not blocked, but also don't, uh, don't give them enough hints that uh, they could solve the problem without thinking or without doing the necessary steps of searching about the idea or searching about, uh, I don't know, searching about the concept or the idea or the trick that you have implemented so that they could learn about it bit, and then they will have an added value, they will learn something and they will uh, gain something from the CTF challenge. Finally, also you should take into consideration some common issues, for example, missing libraries or uh, for example, the Java development kit if your challenge is written in Java, so make sure to include all the necessary libraries, all the necessary uh, dependencies about your CTF challenge in the description. And that's all, that's it, you just created your first ever CTF uh, challenge as a new or as a junior CTF author or a technical team member. What's next? Well, here are some tips and tricks that you should take into consideration, uh, into consideration or you should think about in order to make an interesting uh, CTF challenge and at the same time, these are some problems I myself encountered or uh, some difficulties that you should try to avoid in order to make your CTF challenge interesting and avoid all sorts of problems. We will start with the good things. So, a good CTF challenge is creative. When it comes to choosing the name, choosing the description, and choosing the flag itself, make sure that you are uh, creative with, with choosing the names. You could be, for example, including small hints inside of the name or uh, including small hints inside of the description. Let's take an example. For example, I recently made a CTF challenge called Randomware. It's not ransomware, but actually randomware. And the trick right here, or the uh, or the idea behind this uh, particular CTF challenge, was that the players were asked to, uh, let's say, predict the third number in a sequence of two numbers uh, that were randomly generated using the Java Pseudo Random Number Generator. And that's it. So the name you can see, randomware, ransomware, something like that. It's it kind it kind of hints at the actual idea or the actual trick. Also have fun and make the challenge uh, fun. You could be including some jokes or whatever inside of your challenge. Uh, another tip, which is to be specific and try to include one trick or one idea or one topic per challenge and avoid chaining a lot of ideas together, since uh, you might be thinking that makes the challenge harder, but but it's actually just. Uh, wasting the time of the players, especially if all of the tricks are already known or aren't that interesting. So choosing one interesting trick uh, that could be uh, developed in itself and could be complex in itself is much better than chaining a lot of basic uh, tricks or chaining a lot of basic vulnerabilities. Finally, and the most important thing right here is to make sure that your CTF challenge is very well written. Do not leave room for bugs or runtime exceptions, runtime errors, of that especially if it's not intended if you don't know about it and make sure to take your time and uh, do not rush things that's all now coming to the other side to the bad things uh, your challenge does not have to be guessy what do you mean by guessy for example you do not give hints at all about how a player could solve the challenge that is a bad challenge since the goal of playing ctfs or playing a certain ctf challenge it's to learn something, so when the players are just guessing random or making random guesses, they're not actually learning something and it comes kind of a luck matter who wins and who loses. Also, make sure your flags are very long and not easy to crack, easy to uh, brute force for example, or easy to guess, since that also uh, kind of is opposite to the point of playing CTF challenges, which is learning and actually solving the challenge. They could just uh, guess the password or guess the, I don't know, 
uh, if you need a certain number for example in a, in a reverse engineering challenge or I don't know so make sure the flags are long you could be adding a random number for example at the end of the flag or making all of it random you could be using a lead case or uh, uh, using a, a combination of numbers letters uppercase a uh, smaller case uh, also you could be including symbols and all of that third thing is avoiding unintended solves or looking for unintended solves which also has a big uh, relation with the part of solving the challenge yourself so that you can see if uh, there is any unintended solves or any uh, any ways of solving the challenge that you didn't think of initially and finally in avoid please avoid making challenges that have no added value which means repeating the same concept over and over or choosing very easy concepts that do not have added value that the players will just solve and not learn anything from it. That's all, so we have just talked theoretically about making a CTF challenge. Uh, now you could be, uh, for example, we could be making a small CTF challenge, a small reverse engineering CTF challenge, just in order to have uh, a quick look about the process itself. So I run my WSL and we will have a small look at how we can make a small CTF challenge. So I'll go here to this directory called video and uh, right here we have three files. A file called, uh, let, let me just move this notes file out of the way so it doesn't bother us. So for a verse engineering challenge, a very simple or a very basic, uh, a very basic idea is using the strings command. Let's just see what's inside of the file. So. Right here we have it, a normal C file that has uh, this flag inside of the string. As you can see right here, the flag contains the, the sentence strings is so cool and then a random number at the end. Since if it was just strings is so cool, players might write and it might actually work, which is kind of opposite to the point we're making. So you start by choosing the idea, which is uh, the strings command or uh, for example, you could be also doing this. Uh, well, let's keep that for later. But you could be using a plenty. There's plenty of flags or plenty of parameters, arguments that you could give to the strings command in order to make it look for strings in other manners or in other uh, methods. So after making or uh, writing your uh, C code, you just compile it. Let's just remove this a.out file. I just compile it using the GNU C compiler, gcc, and then strings.c. Voila, and finally we have this a.out file. If we run it, it just gives us the banner. As you can see, for example, right here, when we are talking about the concept or uh, the creativity point, you could be, for example, uh, naming the challenge itself welcome uh, with these quotes at the start and at the end in order to hint at the strings part since all strings start and end with a quote in any programming language. That's for example uh, something you could mention or something you could include in your own uh, CTF challenge. It's a way of making the CTF name, uh, the CTF challenge name point or hint at the way of solving the challenge. Now the solution is pretty simple, it's just strings a dot out and as you can see right here we can uh, we could easily find the flag which is right here exactly string security nets strings is so cool and then we have this random number right here to avoid brute forcing and uh, avoid any uh, kind of guessing so that's the point that's uh, that's the whole point of the video which is how you can make a nice interesting ctf challenge we have talked about pretty much everything if you like the video just leave a like subscribe to the channel and share it with your junior or future ctf authors and thank you so much for watching see you in the next video